And the home portion of the Keitha Adams era underway as Wichita State entertaining South Dakota here this afternoon. The Shockers in search of their first victory. Shane Dennis alongside Denny Gehrig here at courtside. And this South Dakota team, 23 wins a year ago, Denny, kind of reflective of the non-conference schedule period for Wichita State. It's going to be tough. A very tough non-conference schedule indeed. And it all starts here at Charles Coke Arena, a South Dakota team that won 23 games a year ago, advanced to the WNIT. And really just a very efficient offense. They were top 11 in the country in three major offensive percentage categories. Offensively for Wichita State, everything runs through Rangy Bassard. She's been good in their first two games. It's not often that you ask a post player to kind of initiate the offense, but Wichita State really wants Rangy Bassard to be a point forward. They want the ball in her hands a lot, giving her the freedom to create scoring opportunities, both down on the block and also on the perimeter. Angie Tompkins had kind of a topsy-turvy start to her season. She really didn't do much at all against Creighton, but then went off against Oklahoma State. Yeah, that came down in Stillwater, kind of a microcosm of her last season in a Wichita State uniform. She scored 17 points in the first half alone, but then kind of disappeared in the second half, only had two points. The Shockers need a full 40-minute effort from her this afternoon. Conversely, Kiki Thompson didn't do much against Oklahoma State, but went crazy against Creighton. They need a little bit of middle ground from her while keeping her aggressiveness. We knew that she was an impact defender. We knew that she could distribute the basketball effectively, but the Shocker coaching staff has been asking her to be a lot more aggressive, taking the ball to the basket and also expanding that jump shot. Wichita State will have its hands full here this afternoon as the Coyotes from South Dakota invade Charles Coke Arena. Back with the starting lineups after this. Introducing Duncan's new cold brew coffee. Steeped slowly in cold water for small batches with an ultra smooth full bodied flavor. Discover the craft of cold brew today and keep on. America runs on Duncan. South Dakota is an offense denning that uh, is a motion offense, so puts you in a lot of tough situations. And last year, all conference, Allison Arns uh, will be something to deal with again this year. Averaged 17 points a year ago, just relentless in her willingness to attack the basket. She's a capable outside shooter. She really is. Can absolutely knock down the three-point shot, but. Her main objective, her main goal is getting into the paint and getting to the foul line. She had 180 trips to the charity stripe last season. 47%, 80% from the line a year ago. South Dakota, very high functioning offense. Keitha Adams gonna have her hands full here this afternoon. The South Dakota Coyotes head coach, Don Plitzewite in her second season, of course, Keitha Adams in her first big test today for Wichita State, Denny. Yeah, a big test too and a home opener, and I think that can really set the tone for not only how the season's going to go at home, but also just the season in general, and I think the Shockers have a chance to really make a statement this afternoon. Plenty returning for the Shockers, but also for South Dakota. As there we see their starting lineup uh, marched out by Coach Plitzy White in her second season. She had a lot of success at Grand Valley State, Northern Kentucky uh, after that. High, efficient offense for South Dakota. This should be fun to watch. Wichita State will have a real test here today. Jumping center for the Shockers, Angie Tompkins, player we highlighted in the open. She actually won the tip, but it went to South Dakota. And after a little bit of a scrum, the Shockers get their hands on it for the first time. Andra Stovall, one of the many seniors for Wichita State, handling the ball out front. South Dakota starting in an early man-to-man, -man. 10 to shoot. Lockhart maybe got bailed out a little there, dribbling around with nowhere to go, but got bodied out of bounds. Coyotes are going to stay in that man-to-man -man virtually the entire 40 minutes. They're going to force Wichita State's guards to do something from the perimeter, absolutely trying to limit Bussard. Kira Duffy picked up the personal. 
The Shockers will reset. Here's Kiki Thompson, we highlighted her. She was a lot more of a distributor a year ago. The Shockers coaching staff wanting her to assert herself, taking the ball to the basket. First shot of the game for Wichita State by Diamond Lockhart. Comes up a little bit short, one and done on their offensive end. Long angle three, no good, but an offensive rebound and put back by Kate Liveringhouse. She's a player that didn't do much last year, Denning, but really coming alive this year. Yeah, it was essentially a bench player for each of her first three seasons, but has stepped into a starting role, had 17 points against Iowa State and 18 against Creighton. I think I said Duffy with a foul, Liveringhouse with a foul last time the Shockers were down on this end. Nine to shoot, Bassard. And if that's against Liveringhouse, that might be two quick ones on her. That is, so that'll help. She's been off to a good start here in the early going. Had 17 in the opener against Iowa State, 18 against Creighton, but she's gonna have to go to the bench. So that could be big. High low to Bassard, didn't get through. Shocker got bailed out. And Tompkins finishes around the rim. Angie Tompkins had 19 against Oklahoma State, her career high. With Liveringhouse on the bench, expect Wichita State to go inside early and often. Bassard and Tompkins should have mismatches down in the paint. A foul against Kiki Thompson. Again, this South Dakota bunch pushed Iowa State. Lost by five in Ames. Very tough place to play. Nice overplay and steal by Stovall leading the break. Good job by the Coyotes to get back. And it looked like Rangy Bassard got shoved underneath. But Taylor Frederick will be her first foul. So see if Wichita State can get the bonus here in early going in the first period. Three personal foul or three team fouls so far on the Coyotes. Good job by Stovall too, jumping that pass. She's shown good anticipation on the defensive end. Boy, Angie Tompkins picking up where she left off against Oklahoma State. Four quick ones for the Shockers. Very efficient scorer when she gets going. She is very much a rhythm player. If you can keep getting her shots, keep getting her the ball and good opportunities to score, she will deliver. The Shockers got a closeout and a rebound on the weak side by Stovall, but then she kind of had some issues getting out of backcourt. The held ball will stay with Wichita State. Shockers need Stovall to be a steward of the basketball. Last year she had almost as many turnovers as assists. Not something you want to see from an upperclassman point guard, but this coaching staff feels like she's taking big strides in the offseason. And I don't think there's a foul here. We've got a stoppage in play. One of the officials maybe seeing Kira Duffy, yep, she's bleeding just above her left elbow, so stoppage in play. She'll get that all patched up. Shockers with a early 4-2 lead against South Dakota. I really think those two fouls against Liveringhouse could be important uh, because Tom Comptons needs an opportunity to get isolated down on the block against a smaller defender. She can use her six foot one frame to shoot over the top of you. Also has some good quickness to go around a bigger post player. And so this could be an opportunity for Wichita State to exploit that mismatch. This South Dakota uh, team, as of a couple of weeks ago, was in the top 25 mid-major poll. And the Shockers after today will have played or will be scheduled to play three teams in the top 25 in the mid-major poll, South Dakota, South Dakota State, and Western Illinois, in addition to what Denning and I talked about in the open dates against Tennessee, two against Missouri State. Desperation three to beat the clock was no good by Stovall and all coyotes underneath. Those are the kind of possessions that South Dakota is trying to force you into. Guarded shots from the perimeter. They're okay if Stovall and Lockhart are trying to beat them. It's trying to prevent Tompkins and Bassard from getting the basketball down low. Looking underneath, Frederick couldn't find a cutter. Tend to shoot for the Coyotes. Spot up three, right wing is good. J.C. Bradley averaged nearly 13 a game a year ago. Again, this is a, a team that shot 47% from the field, 38 from three, and 80 
from the line. They don't miss very often. And Bradley's the one girl you absolutely can't let get free. She was in the top 10 in the country in three-point percentage a year ago. Tompkins pitch out to Bassard, angle three just short, right on line, but couldn't get enough on it. And Allison Arns couldn't corral the rebound, so it'll stay on this end. About four minutes gone by, opening period. Shocker, home opener. Bassard cutting to the basket, put up a prayer, hit the side of the backboard, wasn't answered. Jasmine Trimboli in there for the first time. As that three straight away by Bradley wouldn't go. So Shockers, in, in essence, dodge a bit of a bullet because she got a decent look that time. You're not going to see either one of these teams getting out in transition very often. Both like to get set up, run their offensive sets, and try and get the best shot out of that. Runner by Di Diamond Lockhart, no good. But Jasmine Trimboli slid underneath hers. This is a South Dakota team beginning that likes to drive the ball, but in that case, Diamond Lockhart turned the tables. Yeah, a couple defenders slid with Bissar down towards the paint, gave Lockhart a little bit of an opening, and she took advantage. Good quick first step. 71% foul shooter a year ago. When back rim, no good. Monica Arns, the sister of Allison, and two of six kids in the Arns family checks into the game. Monica, a freshman, wearing number 11. Now Bridget played in this South Dakota program earlier and uh, very much a family affair with the Duffies and the Arns. Yeah, the Duffies, two of eight kids in that family and Kira and Caitlin on the team at the same time. Nice back cut and feed by Allison Arns to Jasmine Trimboli, her first two points. Just a broken play. The, the pass originally intended for Arns just kind of went near, nearly into the backcourt. Two defenders slid up and then no one on the backside. Tompkins had it stripped. It'll stay on this end. Allison Arns doing a nice job of looking opposite and it paid off. Yeah, but it was because Stovall and Lockhart both felt the need to slide up to, to protect against the three-point arc, and no one on the backside. Bassard lost it on the inbound. I think Wichita State's guards, Denning, have done a nice job trying to probe this defense for South Dakota, but there's been not really much going on, and a good job recovering on the Shocker post players, too. Allison Orange, J.C. Bradley, they'll both drive you and look for an open player to dish it to. That time, Kira Duffy drives in, got cut off, and three seconds. Picked up the ball, picked up the dribble with nothing to do with it. So a turnover by South Dakota, and we got a timeout on the floor. So South Dakota with an early two-point lead over Wichita State in the Shockers' home opener. South Dakota with an early two-point lead midway through the first period. Shockers have shot it just two for seven in the early going, missing both their three-point attempts. 
But what may be the, the story of the game, if it continues like this, though, Denning, is the foul trouble, uh, foul trouble for South Dakota. They already have four. And it's reflected in the way that Wichita State's running their offense, getting Tompkins and Bassard five of the team's seven total shots to begin this first quarter. They recognize that that may be their lone advantage on the offensive side of the ball. They're going to try and use as many opportunities as possible to exploit that. And Tompkins has been real active in the paint. Rangy Bassard has kind of picked her spots when to go down there, especially on inbounds plays. But I think Keitha Adams, if you'd ask her, she'd be pretty pretty pleased at the, the opportunities they've had on the offensive end. They just haven't been able to cash them in. And like you mentioned, I think that all starts with the guards, whether it's Kiki Thompson, Andre Stovar, Diamond Lockhart, getting those post players in a position where they can receive the basketball with a scoring opportunity, and if not scoring, at least drawing a foul. Only one foul for Wichita State on their end. They haven't sent the Coyotes to the free throw line yet, which is uh, normally murder, especially so this season. They're a 91% foul shooting team, which is incredible. To just say you have one 91% <laughs> foul shooter on your team would be one thing, but it, so far so good, I think, for Wichita State. It's a dangerous team they're playing. It seems like a minimal thing, keeping another team off the free throw line, but I know Wichita State's coaches really emphasize that in their scouting report. Everyone one through five likes to drive the basketball for the Coyotes, and if you can keep them off the free throw line, they made 19 of 20 against Creighton. That's a big part of their offense. So walking it up is Kiki Thompson. South Dakota has been in man from the start. Angle three, no good. Boy, the Shockers did everything but make the basket right there. That was a good offensive possession. Good extra pass from Stovall, too, after Tompkins was able to get by her defender down on the block, start the rotation. Tompkins did a really good job of looking opposite once she got on the left block. Lockhart backs it out. We're on a clock play with seven to shoot. Forced, blocked. A jump ball, so it could have been worse. Could have been a Diamond Lockhart foul in backcourt, but as it is, the alternating possession goes the way of the Coyotes. Nice block by Jasmine Trimboli. Don Plitzewhite certainly did not think it was a jump ball. She was arguing for a foul call, but that was great defense by Trimboli staying in front of Lockhart. High-low pass from... Chloe Lamb didn't get through. Wichita State with a steal and foul in backcourt. That is foul number five on South Dakota, so the Shockers now in the bonus. That's the kind of impact defending, though, I'm talking about from Kiki Thompson. She has very good anticipation and instincts on the defensive side of the ball, knows when to help off on a defender, and slides down for the steal. Tripping foul on Monica Arns. So the Shockers first one to the bonus. Thompson's first point, we mentioned earlier, in the previous game against Oklahoma State, she played 29 minutes, only had one point, did have four assists. Second one wouldn't go, so the Shockers have now split a pair at the free throw line twice, but South Dakota fumbles it out of bounds, it'll stay to Wichita State. Two red jerseys going after the basketball, no communication underneath, and the Shockers catch a break. An alley-oop for Tompkins, but she couldn't handle it as Trimboli came over from the weak side to take it away. I like the play call idea, though. Bassard had Tompkins with, with the defender having her back turn, but nice job by Trimboli on the backside. That's now the fourth turnover of the quarter for South Dakota. And Wichita State hanging around. Only the Coyotes about as sound as it gets in terms of winning the turnover battle. They came in plus four in that category through their first two games. I think the pace of the game, really Keith Adams probably pretty happy with. Tompkins steps out, attempts a three, can't hit, but a good weak side rebound by Diamond Lockhart. I would absolutely agree that this is the kind of pace Wichita State wants to play at, limiting the possessions, able to dictate the terms of their offensive sets. Winning the turnover battle, at least in the early going, getting the free throw line. Bassard, corner three is good. Rangy Bassard with her first field goal. Wichita State takes the lead. All because of the aggressiveness of Kiki Thompson, forcing the help side defender to slide over. And you can't leave Bassard in the corner. She's a more than capable three-point shooter. 
the three, not a big part of the Shockers offense. Nice pass and cut, Allison Arns banks it in. Wichita State so far in the first couple of games averaging right around five three-point makes per game. But that big one by Bassard in the corner gave him a brief lead. It's now 9-9, final two minutes of the quarter. Hard to believe we went as long as we did without even a shot attempt from Allison Arms. Just now getting on track. Boy, Lockhart would have had an open 17-footer if she could have handled the pass initially. Good up and under move and Stovall couldn't finish. Final two minutes of the quarter. Deep angle three, no good. Jasmine Trimboli feeling it there. The outlet pass nearly fumbled by Stovall. Wisely backs it out, they'll set up the offense. Five players over at the scorer's table set to check in at the next dead ball. Jumper on the right baseline is good. Kiki Thompson's first field goal. She's got three. The Shockers retake the lead. Already looking like a very different Kiki Thompson from a year ago. Willing to attack the basket, but also showing a good ability to pull up on the mid-range jump shot there. A step back long two is good. That's the kind of thing you can't afford, Denning, is to leave players like Monica Aaron's arms open or really anybody on the club, you give them an open look, they're all dead-eye shooters. And they run a lot of flares too. That's how they cleared Arns for that jump shot attempt and stepped into it with confidence. Arns only had two points in the victory against Creighton, gets her first two of the quarter to tie it up at 11. On the drive, Stovall into the corner. Thompson lost it, steal by Allison Arns. Shockers should have one more possession here if they can get a rebound on a miss. A steal by Wichita State. Shot clock is off. We'll see if Wichita State tries to attack here. Now it appears that the Coyotes got back quick enough that Shockers will hold it for one. Pretty quick first quarter here. Free throw line jumper is good by Andres Stovall with 10 seconds left in the period. Desperation heave, no good by Allison Arns. And so far, so good for Wichita State. It's 13-11 Shockers after one. You're watching The American on WSU-TV. Duncan's new cold brew coffee. Steeped slowly in cold water for small batches with an ultra smooth full body flavor. Discover the craft of cold brew today and keep on. America runs on Duncan. Shockers after one, winning the rebound battle, winning the turnover battle, and even though the shooting percentages favor South Dakota because of the first two stats I mentioned, Denning, Wichita State out in front, thanks in large part to Angie Tompkins early and then Rangy Bassard late. Yeah, it's the turnover battle that I think is the key one. Wichita State forcing the Coyotes into some uncharacteristic errors. They've got four steals. Kiki Thompson making her presence felt on the defensive end, but also on the offensive side as well, just kind of creating some opportunities driving the basketball and creating open looks for her teammates. And I don't think anybody individually for Wichita State Denning tried to quote unquote do too much. They let the offense come to them, probe the defense nicely and got some decent looks even though they didn't hit a high percentage. That's what you want. You can't always make the ball go in. You can only do what you can do offensively and that everybody 
stayed within themselves in that first period. And the Coyotes do such a good job defensively of kind of staying in front of you, forcing an opponent to break them down with extra passes or by creating penetration and kicking. And so it really doesn't coordinate well with an isolation type offense. The Shockers with a two point lead after one period here at Charles Coke Arena. And no surprise, uh, UConn at the top of the list. USF has won a couple already in the non-conference. Wichita State trying to get its first victory along with Houston. But you and I touched on it, Denning. In addition to the game here, Wichita State will have games against Tennessee, New Mexico, Illinois, a couple against Missouri State from the old Missouri Valley. Uh, Wichita State's non-conference is going to be a real bear. So if the wins don't reflect it, We'll kind of know why. And at the very least, it's a schedule that you feel like has opportunities for growth, opportunities to take on very good teams and show the Shockers what they'll be up against once they head into American play. So here we go, second quarter. The Shockers with an early two-point lead after the first couple of minutes. Alicia Fay checking in for the first time for Wichita State along with Cesare Ambrosio, and there's a turnover. Shockers only had three turnovers in the first period. One-on-one -on -one battle, Arns trying to get around. Tompkins does so. Boy, that was a nice finish by Allison Arns. That's something you don't see much from a guard, the ability to post up, but she can absolutely score with her back to the basket and against a much bigger defender there in Tompkins. So Faye and Ambrosio, first two off the bench for Wichita State. They were sitting over at the scorer's table for a long time, waiting to check in at the end of the first. Madison McKeever also in for the first time for South Dakota along with J.C. Bradley checked back in. There's a turnover on two consecutive trips down the floor for the Shocks. It's looking a little bit out of sorts and unsure of how to attack this South Dakota man-to-man -man defense. Arms looking underneath. Taylor Frederick, the sophomore, working on Faye, hooks it up and in. Didn't go too fast. Good job staying composed, kind of feeling out the defender on her backside, recognizing where she was positioned, and then adjusting accordingly. Nice spin move. Four in a row by the Yotes. Shockers trying to answer here early second. They go on baseline, lost it. Now the patience exhibited by Wichita State in the first quarter is totally dissipated here in the second, get a little ahead of themselves. And this is where I think you have to really lean on that veteran backcourt. When it's Thompson, Stovall, and Lockhart all in there, that's three seniors handling the ball a lot of the time. But now the Shockers have gone to their bench. They're going to ask some newcomers to break down this Coyote defense. Arns on the drive, went right around Lockhart and drew the foul at the rim. Looked like Alicia Fay, freshman from France, with a foul trying to help out. But the worms definitely turned here in the second quarter, Denny. That's just good aggressiveness by Arns. And you know that she likes to get to the free throw line. She was there 11 times in the victory over Creighton. Went 180 times last season. And that's a big reason why she averaged 17 points a game. 87% foul shooter a year ago. Again, we mentioned Allison Orange, J.C. Bradley, Madison McKeever. All those players love to drive, love to get it to the rim. And Allison Arns now has six points in her first two free throws. Best free throw shooting team in the country a year ago, and they were top 11 in field goal percentage and three-point field goal percentage as well. That is efficiency. Eight to shoot, another turnover. That's the fourth of the second quarter. McKeever, coast to coast, banks it in. Madison McKeever, who had nine points in the victory against Creighton, a little run for the Coyotes now as South Dakota up six. Four possessions and four turnovers for Wichita State. Haven't got anything resembling an offensive set. Need to get the ball in the hands of Bassard. Jalea Preston in there for the first time this year for Wichita State, coming off that injury that had her out all of last season. There's another Wichita State turnover, and the, the second unit for the Shockers really sluggish. Just haven't seen them getting the ball to Bassard opportunities to do something with it. We know that they like to use her to kind of initiate things on the offensive end when you're relying on other players to kind of break down a man-to-man -man defense. It can be difficult. Yeah, and they look for Angie Tompkins a lot early in the first quarter. She's over on the bench getting a rest. So where the offense comes from and the direction that it comes from here in the second quarter, the Shockers are still trying to iron out. The 
This motion offense from South Dakota makes it necessary and a fumble out of bounds. Wichita State will finally get a turnover, but it makes it necessary for these Coyote players, whether they're bigs or guards, you gotta be comfortable on the perimeter. and You can see a lot of four out and one in when they attack on offense. Yeah, it's kind of indicative of the direction in which basketball as a whole is going. You know, the reliance on the three-point shot, the recognizing that it's more efficient to shoot from the perimeter and in close, and that is how this Coyote roster is kind of constructed. Good job by Taylor Frederick to beat the Shockers down the floor, but she dragged a pivot foot and turned it over. So there's back-to-back -back giveaways by South Dakota. That was good hustle, too, by Faye, getting back on the defensive end and keeping the hands high and forcing Frederick to kind of shuffle the feet. Shockers could use the hoop. They trail it by six. Been a drought here in the second quarter. Massar to force, missed everything right to the right, and that was partially blocked, so there's a reason why. Shockers will keep it with 12 to shoot. Well, ideally she'll be getting paint touches, but if you have to start by getting her the ball on the perimeter, at the very least, we know she's capable of taking her defender off the bounce. Deflected out of bounds. And no matter where she is in front court, if she gets some touches, you trust her to make the decisions, whether to shoot it or distribute. She's a valuable member of Wichita State and what they want to do offensively. 19 against Creighton, 17 against Okie State. Preston with a runner. She knocks it down. Shockers have really emphasized those special teams plays, out-of-bounds plays that can create a good shot opportunity. And nice job by Preston, too, recognizing she had just a half step and then taking advantage. I think I said Preston making her first appearance. I misspoke. She had six in each of the first two games against Creighton and Oklahoma State. Rainbow three missed everything. Wichita State fortunate to get the rebound. You don't always count on air balls, but the Shockers came up with that one. And returning the favor, Alicia Fay maybe got a little excited that she got an open look from the right wing. And a collision after a wild shot by Allison Arns. That's Three three-pointers in a row that really didn't even scare the rim. <laughs> well, that's South Dakota's game. It's not necessarily Wichita State's. They only made 30% from behind the arc in their first two contests. South Dakota was at 44%. So South Dakota, I think, is fine continuing to shoot from distance. Wichita State is going to have to be on the attack. So Preston joined by now Tompkins, Kiki Thompson, Ambrosio and Rangy Bassard, the five for the Shockers, trailing by four. Tompkins had position there for a moment. Nice cut, but boy, that pass would have been a miracle if it would have gone to its intended target, Ambrosio. And a foul on the drive by McKeever. We'll send Madison McKeever to the line for a pair. That's what you're going to give up with those live ball turnovers. They can create run outs and opportunities to get out and transition. And I wonder why they just didn't get the ball to Tompkins. Looked like she had good post yep. position, high hands, was available, and ultimately resulted in a turnover and free throws on the other end. Initially, Frederick fronted her, but then when they, the pass went to the wing, she got around Frederick and was open, but Preston couldn't get it to her. And two free throws by Madison McKeever. And it's not always this easy. I don't want to make it sound black and white, but I just feel like Wichita State's offense operates on a much higher level when they get post touches, force the defense to collapse, and then work inside out. And after receiving the pass, Tompkins saw the double coming, wanted to pass out of it opposite, and misfired looking for Bassard, I think. That's still the right concept, though. Get, get the ball down to Tompkins, force the double team to arrive, and then you can kick it backside, but that time, some miscommunication of Spassard cut one way and the pass went the other. Turnover's the story for Wichita State here in the second quarter. Had a fairly clean first 10 minutes, but Wichita State has only scored two points here in the first five minutes of the second. That's Aaliyah Preston for a foul on what looked like pretty good defensive positioning and maybe a leading with the, with the arm there, but Kyle, let's catch a break. Her second. Checking in will be Diamond Lockhart, replacing Cesaria Ambrosio. 
Shocker's offense has dried up a little bit, but defensively, they've done a decent job of making the Coyotes work for what they've gotten. The lefty hook is short, and Shocker's get a basket right here, Denny. You can feel like, you're, okay, we're right back in the game. Let's get our feet underneath us. This is an opportunity, maybe one of those momentum swings where if Wichita State can just stay within one or two possessions, they'll feel like they're in a good spot. Thompson cut off. Tompkins, a nice look to Preston. Fade away, wouldn't go. Better looking offensive set that time for Wichita State anyway. Got a decent shot out of it. Good defense though, forcing Preston to kind of fade away. Stagger screen up top for Allison Arn. Shockers defended it pretty well. Keever, Arns with 10 to shoot. Good job by Preston to cut her off. Four to shoot and a three-point opportunity at the very end of the shot clock. That's a backbreaker right there. South Dakota taking advantage of a bit of a defensive mismatch. They had McKeever matched up on Bassard on the perimeter. McKeever at 5'7", used her quickness to get around and forced the old-fashioned three-point play. Eight-point lead for the Coyotes with four left to go. Shockers trail it by eight. South Dakota trying to make it nine. They'll have a three-point opportunity on the drive and finish by Madison McKeever. The story of the second quarter so far, Denning, has been turnovers. Shockers have way too many, and South Dakota continues to shoot at a pretty efficient clip, which is what we expected from them. After just three turnovers in the first quarter, Wichita State has doubled that so far in the second. They've got six of them, now nine for the game. And even though, as you mentioned, the defense had been pretty good, ultimately South Dakota just operates at far too high of a level to keep giving them extra possessions. Yeah, they've outscored the Shockers 12 to two, and after six first quarter turnovers for them, they've only had one giveaway in the second. Here's Wichita State's upcoming schedule. Denning and I kind of alluded to it, a little home and home against Missouri State, uh, but more recently, a trip to Tennessee. And that'll be exciting, although daunting at the same time, I suppose. An opportunity to, to see some really high-level basketball. And uh, Wichita State played the Volunteers very close in previous seasons, especially here in Wichita. That New Mexico trip includes games against Illinois and California Irvine as well. So opportunities to, to take on some opponents who will probably be playing some postseason basketball for sure. And Wichita State, again, will Lean on their nine returning letter, letter winners, four returning starters. Uh, we'll hear from Keith Adams coming up at halftime. But normally, Denning, when you take over a program, it's not one that it was 15 and 16 and even Steven in the conference from the year before. So uh, Keith Adams certainly at least has some parts to work with. I think now she's just going about trying to build depth. She has the talent, one through five, I think, to be able to compete in the American, but it's the second unit, and we have seen it in evidence here in the second quarter, that it's just having a hard time operating at the same efficiency level. Yeah, turnovers have been the story in the first six and a half of the second quarter. Open look, no good. Jan uh, Jasmine Trimboli misfired on an angle three. Well, considering the Shockers are shooting 30% to the Coyotes 50 and the turnover problems, the fact that they're within nine is kind of something to build on. You make a little run here at the end of the second quarter, you go into the break feeling pretty good. But 
quality shots have been hard to come by too, Denning, and you got to credit South Dakota for that. In the second quarter alone, I feel like you can count on one hand how many times Wichita State has had a quality look. And the inside out offense is ultimately what's going to create those opportunities for them. This time they got bailed out as Bessard was grabbed down low going for the rebound. But they need to drive the ball aggressively, force the defense to collapse and then, collapse and then react from there. Taylor Frederick picked up her second foul. She goes out and Monica Arns, the freshman, comes in, Allison's sister. Three minutes left, second quarter. Shockers with only two points in the quarter. Quick three right side, missed everything. The defensive rebound to Allison Arms. Shockers really searching for offense here in the second. McKeever had a three if she wanted it against Bassard to see if they, now she picked up her dribble. Thought she might try to take Bassard to the basket. Jump ball, kind of a quick call, but better than the foul certainly, and a good job by Kiki Thompson at 5-5 to challenge Trimboli underneath. Never understood the jump ball call when it, the shot is able to get shot. up to the rim. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just because there was all ball on the way down doesn't mean that you have to call it off right there. Well, and a wide open look by Arns. Allison Arns is no good after she got free. So the Shockers dodging a few bullets here and there. Some open looks from South Dakota that they don't normally make. Preston, pull up, good. Preston has four badly needed basket for the Shockers. And opponents know Preston's capability as an outside shooter, so she has to take advantage of that knowledge and drive the basketball with defenders who are going to close out on her, take away the three-point shot. And a travel, boy, a, a drive to the basket, probably Trimboli would have been better off trying to finish, but made one extra pass and it turned into a turnover. Jalea Preston with her fourth point and second point of the quarter, really big basket for the Shockers. Now we see Jaleesa Chapel making her first appearance this year. Lockhart running a clock play with five. Chapel got a hurry, forces, no good off the heel. Bassard keeps it alive and a loose ball foul on who? The offensive rebounding has been a lot of Wichita State's offense so far. They have six of them and now seven with that one from Bassard as they've taken advantage of the one area on this South Dakota roster that's a little bit lacking and that's height. I think Kira Duffy was assessed a personal, so we'll keep it on this end. A good hustle by Bassard to save a possession. Thompson with a scoop wouldn't go. And foul on the rebound. They gotta get Jaleesa Chapel for going over the back. That's the kind of aggressiveness they want out of Kiki Thompson taking the, the route to the basket though, Denning. Yeah, they, they've run a couple of out-of-bounds plays where they just want to isolate a guard at the top of the key then let her go one-on-one, -on -one, kind of clearing out to the left side. But that time, good defense forced Thompson to kind of loft it off balance. I thought that Thompson scoop had a decent chance of going in, and I don't know if that was a phantom foul necessarily, but that would be a distant cousin of it. Lisa Chapel, I thought, mostly got in front trying to go after the offensive rebound. So we've got a quick timeout here with 75 seconds left to go here in the first half. Hey, if you're looking for a gift for your favorite Shocker fan, stop by the University Bookstore for their annual 12 Days of Christmas sale beginning the 27th going through December the 9th. New sale items will be added each of the 12 days. If you prefer to shop online, you can do that at wsubooks.com. And if you spend over $75, you'll get free shipping. University Bookstore will have extended shopping hours on Saturdays during University Bookstore's 12 days of Christmas sale. Getting to be about that time. 
Thanksgiving right around the corner, then Christmas after that. So head into the university bookstore. Wichita State Denning has, in essence, survived this second quarter. I think that's the best way to put it. Field goals have been hard to come by. Turnovers have been plentiful. But here we are, just a seven-point game. And a second unit that I'm sure is going to draw the ire of Keith Adams, just not operating at the same level as the starters did, which really played so well in that first quarter, gave Wichita State a two-point lead. But, yeah, 13-4 to four outscored by the Coyotes here in this second quarter. You feel okay about the fact that you're only down seven, but opportunities, I think, to be even closer. Well, Bradley's free throw snaps a two-minute, 45-second drought for South Dakota. It's a big reason why the Shockers are still hanging around. But that free throw made it eight, and that one no good. A rare miss with an offensive rebound by Duffy. Went so a stolen a possession there. Went into a crowd to get it. Three white jerseys around her, and it leads to three. J.C. Bradley with a killer three. That's her second. She's got seven points. Turns into a four-point possession. And the Coyotes with their first double-digit lead, just like that. You just absolutely have to run Bradley off the three-point line. Cannot let her get her feet set. She is deadly. And Chapel, after a reach-in by Bradley on the defensive end, dragged the pivot foot, turns it over, and now the Coyotes on potentially their last possession of the half, trying to add to an 11-point lead. Shockers with 11 turnovers to eight for South Dakota. And a drive to the basket. Getting easier now for South Dakota. They continue to probe the Shocker defense and maybe wearing them down here a little bit late second quarter. Arnes got Ch Chapel off her feet just enough to drive by her on the right side. And then nice job going off glass for the finish. Runner no good. Bassard knew it was going to be short. Kept it alive. And a scrum in the corner. Last touch by a shocker laying on the sideline. So that'll give the final possession to South Dakota. Angie Tompkins will check in for the last 9.2 for the Shockers. McKeever and Chloe Lamb check in for the Coyotes for the final possession. We knew that the Coyotes could shoot and they are not disappointing here this afternoon, flirting with 50% for most of the first half from the floor. And that runner goes, but will not count. Offensive foul. Ranger Bassard draw the, drew the charge. That's a great job by Bassard. I mean, they were basically just giving it to Arms and clearing out. She was going to take it the whole way, and so Bassard had plenty of time to slide over. And the only thing she had to make sure of was that she was outside of that restricted area, got the feet set, and drew the charge. Let's see what the Shockers have drawn up for the final 2.3. It's going to be a heave one way or the other. Bassard with a baseball pass, intercepted, and that's how the half ends. So the Coyotes flex their muscles in the second quarter, erasing a first period deficit. They'll go into the halftime break, leading the Shockers by 13. Our halftime show coming up next. You're watching the American on WSU TV. Utah State outscored in that second period, 19 to four, erasing a two-point shocker lead at the end of one. 
And South Dakota coming off a 23-win season a year ago. Now, Denning, we're starting to see why. They're pretty efficient. Yeah, 12 points off of turnovers. They were able to get into good offensive sets. They created shots for their playmakers. You know, they got Arns the basketball and opportunities where she could drive and then feed other players. And then in transition, they were able to find their shooters. Bradley draining a couple big threes. Well, Wichita State did such a good job in the first period hanging onto the ball. Struggled a little bit and with the turnovers and getting good shots offensively. Yeah, there was just a lot of stagnation, I think, in the offense, not moving the ball effectively, not getting it to Tompkins or Bessard in opportunities where they could create. The ball just kind of stuck in certain points and created a lot of bad shots. Wichita State trailing 30-17 to 17 here at the break. Earlier this week had an opportunity to sit down with head coach Keith Adams, longtime Kansas uh, coach in the early part of her career, went to UTEP for 16, now back this year. For Wichita State had a chance to sit down with her earlier this week. Coach, you grew up in Kansas. You cut your coaching teeth in Kansas, but you've been gone a while. You're at UTEP for 16 years. How does it feel to be back in your home state coaching again? Well, it feels great. It's been awesome to be back in Wichita and obviously seeing friends and family and uh, being back in the Sunflower State. It's been great. It's home. Nothing like home. Now, when you move from one place to another, sometimes the cupboard's pretty bare. The team last year was 15 and 16 and 9 and 9 in the league and plenty of players returning. But I know you've got bigger things in mind. What's going to have to change culture-wise, X's and O's wise for you to get where you need to be? Well, I think the big thing we're going through right now is just a learning curve of them learning our system. And, and I'm also trying to learn a lot about them in a hurry. Um, we have eight seniors. I think we're um, evolving as a team, but learning what our strengths and weaknesses are and we're having to uh, every day make adjustments. We are definitely evolving, but i um, hoping we'll be a well-oiled machine by the time we get to conference play. Now when you do and when you have a Keitha Adams type of team that's rolling, what kind of style can the fans expect? Well, I think a team that's uh, athletic and that uh, can score and, and push the ball in transition and play up tempo. It all starts with uh, rebound the ball and playing great defense and then uh, we're working on trying to get some good skill set players that can come in and, and put the ball in the hole. What has been about like you thought it would be before you got here and what has been totally different than you thought it would be now that you're here? Well now that I'm here uh, I just have to remind myself that uh, I'm not in Texas and I'm uh, wearing winter clothes that uh, I'm not used to wearing when I was down in Texas. What's been what I expected is the people have been great, everybody's been uh, very supportive and helping uh, with the transition of coming here to Wichita State, making it very, very smooth. And uh, people here at the university have been phenomenal. Now you referenced the, the conference move. You're at a brand new conference. And with that and some unfamiliarity, you at least like to have some familiarity in the locker room. And you absolutely have that. Like you mentioned, nine returners, eight of them seniors. So at least you have a group that's been around one another. Sure, we have a veteran team and, uh, and that's a positive and they've got good experience. You know, I think for me, uh, you know, I'm having to learn about my own team and I'm also having to study the opponent. I'm trying to really learn about our team and figure out what's the best way for us to play and things that we need to, to do and things that we need to get away from. And uh, we're kind of in an experimental stage right now, but uh, we're going to get better and we're going to be there when conference play gets here. How much do you have to tailor your coaching style to fit the team that you have to inherit? Well, I think the good thing is when I coached junior college, uh, you know, it was a constant changing team. Every year you graduate half your team or two thirds. And so right now I'm just working at trying to figure out what the best way for this group is to play. And uh, that's what we're doing. It not necessarily isn't about me or our system. It's what's the best way for this group. And in order to get those championships and get back to the level that um, had been in the past, mm -hmm. It's going to take some patience yes. from everybody, sure. the fans, the alumni, but you and your coaching staff might have to have a little patience too. How's that going to go? Well, you know, I, I've been doing this for a while, so I think uh, being an experienced coach, I understand the process that we're going through. You know, we're, we're going through a lot of newness with the new group right now, and then next year we're really going to be in the same boat again because we're going to have so many new players. You know, by the time you get a player to their senior year, um, you know them like the back of their hand and they know you like the back of your hand. And so, you know, it's going to take us a while for us to get there where we really know one another. So we're in a constant learning the evolving uh, mode. The Shockers will try to be in comeback mode in the third quarter as South Dakota leading 30-17 to 17 after two periods of play.
Shockers were only able to muster two out of 12 from the floor in the second quarter, and that was pretty much the tail of the tape, 30 to 17 after Denning. Wichita State had a pretty fair first quarter, I think all things considered. It was 13 to 11 on the scoreboard, but the way the game was played was really a, a polar opposite first quarter to the second. Yeah, I think tempo is something that we really need to discuss a little bit more because that seemed to be the big switch that South Dakota was able to flip and absolutely started dictating the terms of how this game was played. The turnovers got them out in transition. And most importantly, I think got Wichita State out of their system defensively. They couldn't find shooters in transition. The Coyotes got the kind of looks that they were hoping for. And you see it reflected there in the shooting percentage, 11 of 23. Even with the rebounding advantage, the, the Coyotes got a lot of the shots that they were looking for and it's reflected on the scoreboard. Well, and what is reflected there in the stats is a lot of driving and probing, so you're not going to get a high assist total. But the one thing that Wichita State certainly needs to shore up is South Dakota went 9 for 13 inside the three-point arc. You, you, you fear them a little bit from the perimeter because statistically they're so good, but they really broke down in the paint. Uh, it, for Wichita State on the defensive end. And you wonder how much of it is that scattering report that every single player, one through five, can shoot the basketball. When you have to respect that, shooting from beyond the perimeter, you know that that creates a ball fake opportunity and the ability to drive the basketball, and that's where South Dakota had a lot of their success. Most of Wichita State's highlights came in the first quarter, and Angie Thompson, I thought, came out really aggressive in uh, hustling down to the post. The Shockers, of course, neither one of these clubs are gonna get much in the way of fast break points. So execution in the half court is paramount. Now Tompkins was doing the work early. She was getting set up in good position down low and that's where Wichita State got her the basketball and opportunities to score. As far as the rest of the quarter goes, Wichita State had its most success when Kiki Thompson was driving the basketball. You saw there she had the nice little pull-up jumper, but she also found Bassard in the corner for an open three earlier. And so that is kind of what I'd like to see the Shockers get back to as we move along. No individual player for either team had more than seven points in the first half. A lot of spreading the wealth. We'll be back with more in the halftime show here in the American on WSU TV. Duncan's new cold brew coffee. Steeped slowly in cold water for small batches with an ultra smooth full bodied flavor. Discover the craft of cold brew today and keep on. America runs on Duncan.
South Dakota came into this matchup averaging in the mid-70s. They hung 76 in a losing effort to Iowa State, 73 against Creighton. Shockers, as far as that's concerned, have kept the score at a pretty reasonable rate. 30 points after the first 20 minutes for South Dakota, but Wichita State's got to find some offense here in the second half. A lot of the same problems that plagued them in their first two losses to Creighton and Oklahoma State. As I mentioned, they only shot 39% from the floor in those two losses, and they're hovering at a percentage right around that, 27% in the first half. Just a lack of quality shots, a lack, I think, of, of playmakers who can just kind of get the ball late in a shot clock situation and make something happen. And it's something I don't think we hit on, probably should have in the last segment, the rebounds are fine. Wichita State's plus seven against the, the Coyotes, but hanging on to the ball and getting the most out of every possession is going to determine the winner or the loser in the second half. Yeah, the rebounding battle was something that Keith Adams has really emphasized in the offseason. She wanted her players to win every 50-50 ball, win the battles under the glass, and I think Wichita State has absolutely done that. It's just getting into an offensive system that creates opportunities to score, getting the ball in your best player's hands in opportunities to score, something that hasn't happened nearly enough. Yeah, Angie Tompkins had four quick points. That's where she stayed in her first 16 minutes. Ranger Bassard played 19 of the 20 minutes in the first half, only had three points, did have five rebounds, but Kiki Thompson only three points, uh, Jalea Preston only four points. So while Wichita State got some balance, they didn't really get that breakout player individually, and nobody really got anything going as far as a flow offensively when you talk individual shockers. Yeah, for me, it's Angie Tompkins who can really be that complimentary scorer to Bassard. We saw in the first half against Oklahoma State, she put up 17 points, so she is more than capable of carrying an offense at times, but when she is limited, when she can't get the ball down in the paint or in a one-on-one -on -one situation that's favorable, the Shockers have hard times creating good shots. Individually for South Dakota, J.C. Bradley, Madison McKeever with seven points apiece for South Dakota. You can stop by the Shockers Sports Grill in Lanes two hours prior to all WSU men's basketball games and enjoy great game day specials on food and drinks. It's a perfect place to meet your friends before all the men's home games. And if Shockers are on the road, you can catch all the games on TV. That's Shockers Sports Grill and Lanes. Lower level in the Radigan Student Center. Of course, uh, the Shocker men's team in Maui at the moment. They'll take on Cal Monday afternoon to start the Maui Invitational as Wichita State will take on California and then on Tuesday, either Marquette or VCU. Wichita State's women, as we mentioned earlier, will hit the road after this. They will be at Tennessee, and then a tournament over Thanksgiving break. There you see it. The trip to New Mexico, as uh, Denning mentioned, will feature games against New Mexico, and then afternoon games on the 25th and 26th against Illinois and UC Irvine before the Shockers come back here to take on Missouri State and then Western Illinois. Games you can see right here on the American on WSU TV and Western Illinois won't be a pushover either. We mentioned they're in the mid-major top 25. That non-conference schedule is really loaded. You would, you would think maybe Keith Adams in her first season would want to lighten the load just a little bit, but oftentimes those scheduling things are, are set up years in advance, and so there's not a whole lot you can do, not a whole lot of flexibility available to her. And I'm sure the previous coaching staff figured that this would kind of be the year with a lot of upperclassmen, a lot of returning talent to maybe load up on the non-conference and set yourself up for a potential at large. And frankly, uh, being built when you're a member of the Missouri Valley Conference, so you want to beef it up as much as you can just in case the Missouri Valley Conference won't help you as much as you might think. But going on to the American makes it a moot point, and as you mentioned, sometimes it's too late to get out of uh, some of these games where the contracts have already been signed. So you made your bed, now you got to lie in it if you're the Shockers. Plenty of games in the American will offer them opportunities for uh, quality RPI wins, <laughs> that's for sure. I uh, think you're right. All right, so here we go, period number three. Glad you could join us here this afternoon for some Shocker basketball on the American on WSU-TV. Glad to bring it to you. Shane Dennis, Denny Gehrig here courtside at the Roundhouse. Shockers got a little work to do here in the third quarter. And they'll start it. with South Dakota and a man-to-man. -man. Open look right side, got what they wanted. Misfiring with Stovall, but the Shockers got the offensive rebound. Kiki Thompson, one of the smallest players on the floor, got the board. Another corner three, that won't go. Another offensive rebound. So they have been pounding the boards, as we mentioned. There were plus seven in the first half. 
Tompkins underneath the basket, needs some help. Little runner won't go. The Shockers got three tries at it, including two three-pointers, and none would go down. I like the offense, though. That was a lot of driving kick. Got a couple of good looks from the perimeter, and the work on the offensive glass continues to be solid. Nice take, though, by Duffy. Kira Duffy getting her first basket. Boy, that was painful. The Shockers got two looks from three, two offensive rebounds, and then in transition, Kira Duffy just methodically made her way to the hoop and laid it in. Nice little teardrop on the jump stop by Kiki Thompson. She's got five. It was a very quick first step. She's able to beat a lot of defenders with just that first movement, and she can blow right by us. That goes right through the hands of Bradley. Made a lot of turnovers by Wichita State, but that's 10 now on South Dakota. Here's the drive and finish. Thompson again with 17 points against Creighton, one point against Oklahoma State. Not just 17 points, but also eight rebounds and six assists in that Creighton game. So she is capable of doing a lot of things well. Andre Stovall's second basket of the afternoon. Four in a row by the Shockers. And some guards creating looks, taking the ball with aggressiveness into the paint. Another turnover for South Dakota. So as the Coyotes give the Shockers a chance to get back in it, they need to continue to cash in and two really well-run offensive sets in the last two times down. A good high ball screen from Tompkins that gave Stovall just that extra little step that she needed. So the Shockers have scored in their last couple of possessions a thing that was really tough for them to do in the second quarter. Only made two baskets the entire quarter. Nine to shoot. Stovall in the corner. Bassard for three. Wouldn't go. Everything but the finish, but that was very well executed. And you've got to respect Bassard's ability as a jump shooter. She can absolutely knock that down when her feet are set. Shocker's doing a nice job of here in the quarter, playing for the drive. But on the weak side, cutting is Kira Duffy for his second basket in the quarter. That's a great job of moving without the basketball by Duffy coming around on the slip screen and then just gliding across the paint. Just a hair late with the defender. Almost three minutes into the quarter. Good high-low look, and Bassard banks it in. A rare basket for Rengi Bassard. Just her second hoop. She's got five points. If defenders are going to front her, you know that there's going to be opportunities for a backside lob, and Lockhart recognized that Bassard had her defender pinned. Deep angle three, no good. Bassard for the rebound. And it's not just about high-low, Denning. It's about angles. You get the proper angle, it makes that high-low pass over the top a lot easier. Yeah, you have to do the work early. You have to get yourself set up where you're in a position not only to allow your post player to seal or defender on the backside, but also to allow yourself to make a pass that's not going to get deflected. Thompson put it on the deck just before dragging a pivot foot. Eight to shoot. Skip pass to Lockhart. Draws some contact, scores anyway. Diamond Lockhart, she has three, and Wichita State humming along offensively here in the quarter. Sometimes that's what you need, late shot clock situation, someone to just take the ball and go and make a play. Eight third quarter points already for Wichita State after getting just four total in the second. Corner three is good by J.C. Bradley. That's her third triple, and Denning has been warning you about her leaving her open, that is really asking for trouble. She shot 45% from behind the arc last season, so if it's if her feet set and she's in rhythm, you can basically count it. And nice hustle play by Diamond Lockhart, but I think she was a step too slow and picks up the personal. Here's that high-low we were talking about, Denning. You gotta, even though you pin your player on your front, you gotta move to create the angle. This is just a good job by Bassard. She looked like she was about to try and fight to the top of the elbow to get set up there and maybe go out for a screen, but instead at the last second, shuffled the feet backwards, and Lockhart was on the same page. It's that diagonal 45-degree high low is what you're looking for, and that's what the Shockers got with Bassard continuing to hustle. Wichita State's gone to a bit of a zone look, which 
is trying to trap and force the ball out of the ball handler's hands, but all it's doing is creating open looks in the corner. Kara Duffy with a corner three after a corner three miss by J.C. Bradley. South Dakota finding its level here after a bit of a sluggish first quarter. Tromboli's second person. The Coyotes just move the ball so well. The thing about a zone defense is that ultimately you're going to be a step slow if there's good crisp ball movement. The ball's being distributed around the perimeter quickly. And when the Coyotes are running kind of that four out, one in look, they can really pass the ball to any number of options on the perimeter. And then when you get back into a man to man, Allison Arns wants to drive it, JC Bradley wants to drive it. You got to have really good discipline regardless of the defense that you employ against the Coyotes. They're a well-oiled offensive machine. Looks like the Coyotes have returned to favor. They're going to run a little zone. Desperation runner did hit the rim, but defensive rebound by J.C. Bradley. And a rare basket in transition for either club. Taylor Frederick beat everybody down the floor. The six-footer from Iowa. And now South Dakota has opened up a 16-point advantage. Shot wouldn't go. Boy, the Shockers now, within the last couple of minutes, are having to work extremely hard to get open looks against the South Dakota defense. Got a timeout on the floor with 4.10 left to go in the third. Coyotes starting to rev it up offensively here at Charles Koch Arena. Wichita State University is preparing today's students to become tomorrow's leaders. The Shock the World campaign is raising $25 million in private funds for a new home for the W. Frank Barton School on the Innovation Campus. Invest today in tomorrow's business leaders by calling 316-978-4076 or visit www.wichita.edu slash shock the world. Well, Wichita State got out to a, a decent beginning to the third quarter, but it's been all South Dakota since then. The Coyotes shooting five out of seven in the period for 71.4% for the period, 53-3 for the game. And that six point, or the six rebound advantage for Wichita State has gotten nullified by the South Dakota shooting. Even when Wichita State has been able to create extra opportunities with the offensive rebounding, they haven't capitalized on it. They had that first possession of this third quarter in which they had three different cracks at it, couldn't finish, and then on the other side, South Dakota really taking advantage of some great ball movement. They're finding open looks for their good shooters, and then also getting out in transition just a little bit. The offense is really clicking on all cylinders for the Coyotes. Yeah. South Dakota, the only four fast break points. They're outscoring the Shocker bench 10-4. to four. And of those offensive rebounds Denning was talking about, six of them have been live ball offensive rebounds uh, to just four for South Dakota, plus six dead ball offensive rebounds. So a lot of stolen possessions for Wichita State that they just haven't been able to get their fists around. Yeah, ultimately 25 points midway through the third quarter is just not going to get it done. They just have not found a, a scorer who can really force defenses to react to her and then create opportunities for others. The no shocker score. No shocker with more than five points. They have three players with four and a pair with five. And not that you need an individual to take over, but when you're down 17, it's starting to get a little dire. You don't need it, but it certainly helps. It certainly would. Four minutes remaining here in the third in the Shockers' home opener. Should be pointed out that the Shockers are a player short here this afternoon, Denning, after a 
injury to a shooting hand. Tamara Lee is in street clothes on the bench for Wichita State. We also haven't seen Sabrina Lozada Cabbage as That's well. That's right. Yeah, she had a nice effort against Oklahoma State in just nine minutes the other night at Stillwater. All Coyotes right here. Been a pretty efficient third quarter for them and a force by Taylor Frederick on a smaller player in Kiki Thompson. Kiki Thompson's second. There we see Lee over on the far right. And a travel as Jasmine Trimboli lost her footing. So the turnovers are just about even now, but the difference is has become the shooting percentage and the efficiency from South Dakota, which basically from the outset, Denning, we were afraid of, basically. That was that was their game plan. That's yep. what their, their calling card is. It's what they hang their hat on. And they take good shots, and they typically make them if they're open. They do a great job of running their offense. Nice job of penetrating that defense, and Lockhart just kind of a stop-and-go dribble finish in the mid lane. It's a big part of her offensive game. It's kind of that stop-and-start hesitation, and then when her defender just freezes up for a half second, she can explode by. So Lockhart becomes the third shocker with five points here this afternoon. Pick and pop three, a brick off the window, but an offensive rebound by Trimboli. And a Redeemer three by Kira Duffy is good. Her second triple, and she now has 10 points. It's they can get you a lot of different of ways. Yeah. Wichita State gets offensive rebounds, can't capitalize. South Dakota gets an offensive rebound. It leads to an open three. It's just kind of been the story. Duffy had eight against Creighton. A pair of threes and 10 points here today. Thompson got all the way in, had to scoop it over the taller player. Bessard with a rebound and a three-point opportunity. She's been off uh, really aggressive and active on the offensive board. Yeah, eight rebounds now for Bessard. She'd had a very slow start in terms of scoring points. She's now got seven and eight, but ultimately South Dakota's done a good job of taking her away on everything except for the offensive glass. McKeever picked up the foul, and Bessard with a chance for a three-point play. She's got seven going for eight. And free throw good. Bessard, 17 points a game last year, all conference. And as Denning mentioned, Sabrina Lozada Cabbage, who hadn't played in the first half, makes an appearance here. The junior forward from Santa Fe, New Mexico, gets in there for the first time. Shockers trailing now by 15. A free throw from Bessard, by the way, just the fifth time the Wichita State's been to the charity stripe this afternoon. That's when you're not scoring and you're not creating good shots, trying to draw fouls and get points the easy way can be a big part of that. Neither team really threatening the bonus here in the quarter. Deep three, rattles out. Took two tours of the rim, but an offensive rebound by Jasmine Trimboli. That second time that the ball hit the rim really cost Wichita State position underneath. I think Preston was in a, a great position to grab the defensive rebound, but that second carom uh, forced a little bit of a, a miscalculation, yep. and the Coyotes ultimately got the rebound and the putback from Trimboli. Tompkins has been quiet offensively, but a nice look. Another high-low with a good angle, as we mentioned. Yeah, that's a good job by Tompkins presenting herself and presenting the open hand, allowing Lockhart to find her. Arm bar called on Audra Stovall. And the possession before, Tompkins touched it twice. He had it, she had it on the left baseline, kicked it out, and then got it back. So staying with it, really the biggest part of that play for Angie Tompkins. She recognized, too, that she was on a slightly smaller defender, and she was able to, to utilize her lower body to shield her away just a little bit and create that passing avenue. Final 111 of the quarter. Coyotes lead it by 15 here in the Shockers' home opener. Tremboli, a skip pass into the corner. Kira Duffy covered up by Lockhart. Backdoor cut by McKeever. Madison McKeever has been active. She's got nine. And the lead back up to 17 again. 
sixth woman of the year in the Summit League last season. She basically plays starters minutes, 27 minutes average last season and play, has played very well this year, 9.7 rebounds against Creighton. Final 40.4. Lozada Cabbage misfires. Tompkins, Johnny on the spot. He has four in the quarter, eight in the game. Shockers need to stop right here just to get some kind of momentum going into the fourth quarter. On one hand, Wichita State has done a nice job of no individual player forcing the offense. But now that you're down 15, maybe somebody will have to emerge and do just that. Someone's going to have, have little, to take over. Yeah, for a sure. little sense of urgency. McKeever with three, with two, runner won't go, rebound Wichita State, length of the court, he won't go. And at the end of three, the Coyotes lead the Shockers 49 to 34. You're watching The American on WSU TV. Duncan's new cold brew coffee. Steeped slowly in cold water for small batches with an ultra smooth, full bodied flavor. Discover the craft of cold brew today and keep on. America runs on Duncan. Shockers basically played the Coyotes even in the third quarter, Denning, but uh, it's not what you're looking for when you're down 13 at half on a good side. The offense perked up, but really South Dakota's hard to stay with when they get their mid-court offense set up. Yeah, I think the Coyotes just operating at a very high level, and it, Wichita State got most of its points kind of in the garbage side of things. Offensive rebounds and putbacks from Tompkins and Bassard. Wichita State only has five assists through the first three quarters compared to 12 turnovers. That's not a ratio that's gonna get it done. And not that they hang their hat on the three anyway, but one out of 13 from distance here this afternoon. Rangy Bassard had an early one down on the other end for Wichita State, but they've gone dry since then. A couple of those might make a difference here in the fourth quarter if you can get them to go. And when the defense doesn't have to respect that element of your offense at all, that really limits you. It, it's forcing you to try and drive and penetrate into a much more compact area because defenses are kind of clogging the lane knowing that you're not going to beat them from deep. J.C. Bradley with 10 points. Kira Duffy with 10 points leading all Coyotes. Wichita State has two players, Rangy Bassard, Angie Tompkins, with eight apiece for Wichita State. So the only home game in a, the midst of a bunch of roadies for Wichita State in the Keith Adams era, a home opener against a pretty tough and rugged South Dakota squad that was 23 and nine a year ago, went to the second round of the WNIT. And they figure to be a handful in the summit again this year. Angle three from the right side by J.C. Bradley wouldn't go. She's already got three triples in this one. Shockers trailing it by 15, trying to chip away at this lead. And a turnover gives it back to the Coyotes. And a walk at midcourt will return a favor. 
And you were talking a little bit earlier, Denning, about maybe Wichita State needs somebody individually to have a, more of a sense of urgency, make a few threes. If you can't do either one of those, maybe get some cheap baskets in transition because when South Dakota sets up their half-court defense, they pretty much have shut Wichita State down. Yeah, something I've been slightly surprised at is that the Shockers haven't tried to throw in a bit more of a press, and I wonder if that's just because of the short bench. A uh, good look by Tompkins to Bassard. She couldn't handle it. Scrum deep in backcourt, handled by South Dakota. See if the Shockers can maybe force a turnover. How about that, talking them into one? Another turnover for the Coyotes, but Wichita State, again, with 8.55 left, going to start cashing them in. Four turnovers in a row from both South Dakota and Wichita State. Nobody can get much of a shot off, but that was a good backdoor cut from Bassard in the past, just a little bit too hot for her to handle. After three quarters, a little more respectable, especially for Wichita State. Both teams with 12 turnovers through three. Bassard looking for a corner three from the left, couldn't knock it down. Now the Shockers are one of 14 from distance. And you'd think from here on out, Denning, as long as South Dakota doesn't have any live ball turnovers, that the Shockers can get run outs, they'd be more than happy to eat a little clock every time they go down the floor. Absolutely. They're at, they're at a point in this game right now where they can run their offense for 30 seconds. If they get a good shot out of it, fine. If not, they're more than content to sit back and play defense. 11 to shoot for the Shockers. So on the other hand, Wichita State not getting much early offense to try to get back in this. Four to shoot. Bomb left side is good. A big shot by Preston for three. She's got seven. And the Shockers needed that shot in the arm. Again, not that they're built on the three, but here and there when you get a couple, makes life a lot easier. Shockers down just 12 now. Just needed a spark. Needed something to get the crowd into it a little bit, get the bench up off their feet, and just get people back into this game emotionally. And one move too many by Kira Duffy. Another turnover, travel by the Coyotes. Lamb and Trimboli will check in for South Dakota. And the Shockers, with another three here, could cut it to within 10. Only the Shockers' second three of the game, this make right here. Preston, a 30% three-point shooter a year ago. Spots up right wing, cover her up. Andre Stovall in the deep right corner with 10 to shoot. And the Bassard off the window wouldn't go. Decent look, but a tough angle. And going to the floor to take it away, Preston with a steal and a loose ball foul. Good hustle in backcourt by Preston. Well, we said South Dakota would be content to run their offense and just get a good shot out of it, but they have been very sloppy with the ball in this fourth quarter. Really have. Four turnovers already and a chance there to get a stop after Bassard tried to muscle it up, but Preston with the active hands gets on the floor first. Took it away from Trimboli, and I think Trimboli was nailed for the foul. That's her third. Bassard with a three-point opportunity. Signs of life for Wichita State as Rangy Bassard with an and one opportunity. That's just strength on strength right there. Rangy Bassard muscling it up the first time through contact. Didn't get the foul call, but then she goes back up again in traffic. Gets it to go and then a chance for the Shockers to make this interesting. Turnovers and fouls for South Dakota and Wichita State dumps in a three. They get a Three-point opportunity for Rangy Bassard when we come back with the Shockers trailing by 10. Wichita State University is preparing today's students to become tomorrow's leaders. The Shock the World campaign is raising $25 million in private funds for a new home for the W. Frank Barton School on the Innovation Campus. Invest today in tomorrow's business leaders by calling 316-978-4076 or visit www.wichita.edu slash shocktheworld.
Shockers have a chance to cut this lead under 10 for the first time in a while as Rangy Bassard will shoot a free throw to try to complete a three point play. Uh, Denning, you brought up a pretty good point during the commercial. After two early fouls, we have seen very little, if any, of Kate Liveringhouse, one of the better scorers offensively for South Dakota, kind of a, a noticeable absence. Not only an absence on the offensive end, but also in, in the rebounding battle. Yeah. South Dakota relies pretty heavily on their guards already to rebound the ball. McKeever was their leading rebounder against Creighton with seven, and so you take away a six-foot forward down on the block, got to feel like Wichita State's size with Tompkins and Bassard could really give them opportunities to score. Yeah, they plus seven Wichita State on the glass, and it's part of what's keeping them in the game is Bassard again with an offensive rebound and put back. Uh, you don't have Liveringhouse down there, one of the few players that has a little size for South Dakota. And the Shockers, still plenty of time, 6.56 left. Bassard can make this free throw. It becomes a three-possession game all of a sudden. And so much of it has changed just because of the turnovers they've forced when South Dakota has been on the offensive end or trying to get out in transition. It's given Wichita State opportunities to chip into the lead without feeling like they're trading baskets. Well, the Shockers are only shooting 34.7 from the field, and that has been the, the, the staggered difference. The stagger that Shockers have been trying to make up has been 50% from the floor for South Dakota but they've won the turnover battle the Shockers have, won the rebounding battle, but they've just had their offense and their field goal percentage dry up a little bit. But again, almost seven minutes left to go to make that up. And Bassard dumps in the free throw, a three-point play for her. She's got 11, and the Shockers are back in it. And here's that full court press that I was talking about just a little bit. Kind of backed off as they crossed the timeline, but with how shaky South Dakota's been with the basketball, I don't think that's a bad idea at all. Well, and make them take 10 seconds off of the, the shot clock, getting into their offense. Maybe once they get into four court, speed them up a little bit and get them in scramble mode. But we'll see. Again, still plenty of time left, 644. That hurts as Liveringhouse back into the game, kind of on cue there, got a nice feed on an inbound cut. I think Wichita State just fell asleep on the inbounds play here. Stovall was late recognizing that Liveringhouse was cutting down the lane. And then once she caught the basketball, that's six foot on 5-2, a bit of a mismatch. Three-point opportunity silences a shocker run. It's now back to a 12-point Coyote advantage. Wichita State here in the fourth period. Two out of five from the floor, and that basket by Liveringhouse was the first by South Dakota in the final period. Stovall with the clock winding down. A Prayer of a three almost went in from about 28 feet by Preston, just off the heel of the rim. Well, that would have been a, a real shot in the arm when Wichita State used up the entire clock. And now a delayed call and foul on Andre Stovall, Andre Stovall. We had a great look at that three in terms of our angle from right here, and it looked right on line. Just it was. an absolute bomb, but that close to what would have been a momentum changing three instead of foul on the other end. So by the time South Dakota shoots again, we'll be under six minutes. And the Shockers trailing by at least 12. Defensive stops and rebounds will be paramount from here on. And a bit of a touch foul on Diamond Lockhart. That'll be the fourth foul for Wichita State. So now the Coyotes, in addition to everything else, Denning, uh, getting close to getting to, to the bonus. And that's as much as automatic as you can get. Looks like pretty good defense here from Lockhart. Maybe just slip the hand down a little bit as a good block by Bassard on the back end of that play. 5.51 left to go. To this point, South Dakota came into the game a 91% foul shooting team. They're seven of eight here this afternoon. So if it comes down to free throws, you're not likely to make up any ground. It's a nice little tool to have in your back pocket, shoot 90% from the line in a close game down the stretch. And offensive rebounds don't hurt either. So now we're 
Inside five and a half left. Shockers down four possessions. McKeever nearly lost it and did. It goes to the deck. A tie ball would go to Wichita State. So Wichita State will have possession down 12. 5.24 left to go in the Shocker home opener. Wichita State just two of eight, uh, two of 16 rather from three point range. Trying to get it to Tompkins down on the low block, but you just can't quite get the positioning on Duffy. Yeah, a lot of passing around the perimeter, no high screen and rolls. They're just looking for post players to flash open and South Dakota choking it off. Last year, the Shockers had a lot of success with that block-to-block -block screening that would either free up either Tompkins or Bassard. And I think South Dakota very well schooled on that. They have read the scouting report and know that Wichita State likes to do that. Bassard posting up Liveringhouse, banks it in. That was a tough angle. Range of Bassard is 13. Shockers cut it to 10. Good offense beats good defense sometimes. Liveringhouse didn't do anything wrong there. Kept the hands high, and Bassard just forced it up and in anyway. Bassard's gone 19, 17, and now 13 in her first three of her senior season. Left-handed shot no good and a delayed whistle. I think that's going to go against Lockhart. Allison Arns, left-handed shot was short, but she was the only one left underneath to get the rebound. So. We'll Go to break with 4.28 left. Shockers trailing by 10. Duncan's new cold brew coffee. Steeped slowly in cold water for small batches with an ultra smooth, full bodied flavor. Discover the craft of cold brew today and keep on. America runs on Duncan. Shockers down 10. Final four and a half minutes coming up. Wichita State outscoring South Dakota 8 to 3 here in the fourth. If you're looking for a gift for your favorite Shocker fans, stop by the University Bookstore for their annual 12 Days of Christmas sale beginning November the 27th going through December 9th. New sale items will be added each of the 12 days. Now, if you'd rather shop online, you can do that at wsubooks.com. And if you spend over $75, you'll receive free shipping. The University Bookstore will have extended shopping hours on Saturdays during the University Bookstore's 12 days of Christmas. Again, that goes from the 27th through December 9th. So the Shockers in their home opener led it after one, 13 to 11, but South Dakota State in the middle two quarters outscored the Shockers 38-21. Wichita State has chipped into it a little bit here in the fourth quarter, Denning, but you're gonna have to get stops almost every time down. And if not every time down offensively, you get a basket at least every other time and mix in some offensive rebounds. And something to be concerned about also, Shane, is that Wichita State with that last foul on Lockhart has put South Dakota into the bonus now where they absolutely excel. And at this point, every foul will mean two free throws and a chance for the Coyotes to, to just keep that margin a, a comfortable one. Now South Dakota has gone their last 217 without a point, allowing Wichita State to score the last five points to get within 10. They got it within nine a couple of minutes ago. But now, as you mentioned, Allison Arns will go to the free throw line where she was an 87% foul shooter a year ago. The entire team is a bunch of dead eyes from 
the free throw line. They were 30 of 33 coming into this one. They've only missed one today. And the lead goes back up to 12. Again, that is such an unheralded weapon to have. As Denning mentioned during the last series of trips up and down the floor, you got the lead late and you shoot that high a percentage from the free throw line, it's a killer for the other team to come back. Bassard got off her feet and fouls Kira Duffy, who was an 83% foul shooter a year ago. Andre Stovall did everything she could to try and front Duffy on the low block here, but as you can see, she moves just so well without the basketball, gets herself in a good position to receive it, and Bassard had to come over to help. A rare miss. Kira Duffy misfires, so they're now 9 of 11 today, 39 of 44, and now 39 of 45. That's like Haley's Comet, two misses from the free throw line. Shocker's still in it, down 12. And because Wichita State does not rely on the three, Denning, you don't have any sniper, so to speak, to bring in to run some plays for to try to get you some instant offense. Yeah, now with five on the shot clock, it's just going to be up to Bassar to go. Couldn't quite corral her own miss, and we'll go back the other way with 334. Timeout on the floor. It's called by Wichita State. But 54-42, Bassard late in the clock. Uh, tried to create and couldn't gather in her own rebound. You stopped by the Shocker Sports Grill and Lanes two hours prior to all WSU men's basketball games, and you can enjoy great game day specials on food and drinks. It's a perfect place to meet your friends before all the men's home games. And if the Shockers are on the road like they are this week, you can catch all the games on TV at the Shocker Sports Grill and Lanes, lower level, in the Radigan Student Center. Shane, it just feels like you can almost tell early in a possession whether Wichita State's going to get a good shot out of it by whether they're just passing around the perimeter or whether they're attacking the rim with intent or distributing the basketball with intent. And we have seen far too many possessions this afternoon where it's a lot of passing and not really moving towards the basket. And South Dakota's going to let you do that around the perimeter. You can play catch with it all you want to out there with them up 12. And especially when Wichita State's 2 of 16 from behind the arc. It just, it's a giant recipe for allowing your opponent to just shoot as, as much as they want from, from distance. A killer offensive rebound there by Allison Arns. The old summit selection a year ago, and then the Shockers are resigned to fouling. Audra Stovall picked up the foul. That'll be her, be her fourth. But Arns to the free throw line to shoot two. Allison Arns with nine points. The lead swells to 13. A little surprised we haven't seen a little more Kiki Thompson here late with Wichita State needing someone who can force some turnovers and create offense, but Kiki has a, has a warm-up top on over on the bench, so her afternoon may be over. This may be the five that Keith Adams goes with. Final three minutes, down 14. Now, it should be pointed out that the Shockers were kind of on the brink in the third quarter. It was The roof was about to cave in, but they staved that off. They eventually cut it to a nine-point lead. Now, South Dakota's kept the Shockers at arm's length, but this could have gotten away from them in the third quarter. Promising resiliency and a, a lot to build on, I think, for Wichita State, but can they take that next step? Nice floating jumper by Preston. She's got nine, a quick timeout from Keitha Adams, and I think Really, the tail of the tape here, Denning, is what happened in the second quarter. That's what Keith Adams is going to have to dissect after this one's over to make sure it doesn't happen again. 19 to 4 in the second quarter is a backbreaker. And we saw something similar to that last time out against Oklahoma State, where there was one quarter that did the shockers in. They were outscored 33 to 16 in the first period down in Stillwater. And so it's great that you can remain competitive for three quarters, but ultimately, if there's going to be that one that sinks you, there's it's very difficult to come back from that. Yeah, the Cow Cowgirls couldn't miss in the first quarter of that one. Uh, this is a much different story in that Wichita State struggled to get anything going offensively and really had a hard time hanging on to the ball. Only got four points and gave up 19 in the interim when you turn it over that much. So, again, Wichita State hanging tough within 12 here in the 
final three minutes of the Shockers home opener. This is a South Dakota team that's gonna win a lot of games this year in the Summit. And a walk, they imploded at times here this afternoon too. They've actually turned it over more than Wichita State. That's 18 unofficially for them. And five now on Duffy. A lot of them I feel like have been relatively unforced as well. Lockhart looking underneath. Bassard banks it in. Kind of a no-look wild shot by Rangy Bassard, but she banks it in, gets the Shockers within 10 with two minutes left. Well, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen right now. Shockers need to start forcing turnovers and getting out in transition quickly. And I don't know if there's enough time left to try to get stops and come down and make a non-three-pointer, and certainly offensive rebounds are killers. That's... That's tough to take right there. Long three missed by Trimboli, and the Shockers couldn't secure the defensive rebound. Allison Orange has had some big-time offensive rebounds down the stretch here for South Dakota. That's the kind of plays that the junior from Crofton, Nebraska, made all last season, and looks like she hasn't dropped off this year as well. She becomes the first Coyote with 11 points. Kira Duffy and J.C. Bradley both with 10. Now she has 12. And the lead back up to a dozen. Let's see what the Shockers have up their sleeve here in the final 150. Rainbow three from the left side, no good. Rebound, Bassard stripped. And what do we got? Timeout. Did South Dakota get a timeout? One of their players stumbling out of bounds. They got a timeout just before blowing the whistle. Well, South Dakota, they will have a tough Thanksgiving tournament of their own. They're gonna play Oklahoma State, Tennessee, two teams that Shockers will have played. And oh, by the way, Indiana State's going down there. So they'll see an old, old friend of Wichita State's down in the Cancun Challenge. Very difficult non-conference schedule for them as well, and I think that Coach Don Plitzewhite views this season as the year that South Dakota can kind of take that next step to the NCAA tournament. They won the NIT a couple of years ago. They were in the NIT last season, but you return three starters from a team that won 23 games. you got to feel like they're in a position to not only win the Summit, but I think make some noise on into March. They'll also, not pictured there in this, on the 16th of December, they'll play Tulsa at home, so obviously the Wichita State Shockers will end up playing Tulsa as well as Havoc in the Heartland goes to the Hardwood Wichita State's volleyball team winning the second edition of that get together last night down at the Reynolds Center as they extended their winning streak, the Shocker volleyball team did to 17 in a row. Here we've got a minute 35 remaining with a 12 point deficit to try to overcome. It's been tough for Wichita State. Again, only two three-point makes on the day in 17 tries. Really, the offensive efficiency that we highlighted at the top of the telecast inning has really been the kind of the tail of the tape. 46% from the field for South Dakota. They have gotten to the free throw line like they love to do. Arns has been there eight times. She's converted all eight times. And Wichita State, meanwhile, has only been to the charity stripe six times. Just not enough creating scoring opportunities and forcing South Dakota to foul. Two of the players we highlighted at the very top, Rangy Bassard and Angie Tompkins, both had efficient games, if not great. Bassard with 15, Tompkins with eight on four of eight shooting. Coyotes with the ball, Shockers need turnovers and a bunch of them. Three on one if the Coyotes want it. And Liveringhouse fires and hits. Probably not necessary that early in the offense, but as it turned out, that's going to be a dagger. That was an incredibly well-worked press break, too, by South Dakota. They were able to split it, ultimately created a three-on-one opportunity. And like you said, probably should have just brought the ball out, but you can't argue with the results. Nope. 15 points, the Shocker deficit. We're within the final minute. There's an overplay and a steal by Stovall. Maybe got away with a walk, but banks it in. Audrey Stovall. 
She's got six, and that basket may just end up being cosmetic with it being a 13-point Coyote lead. Bassard fouling Allison Arns. This is a pick-your-poison type of South Dakota team. If you back off of them, they can hit the three, but if you go chest-to-chest -chest with them, they can get by and get to the free throw line. They really do drive the ball hard. They force a lot of fouls and a lot of opportunities at the free throw line in addition to their sharp shooting capabilities. They haven't even shot the ball particularly well from beyond the arc. That last three from Liveringhouse made them just six of 22. And they missed more free throws here today than they did in the first two games combined, but they've led virtually throughout after a, a shocker first quarter that had Wichita State leading by two. Final 40 seconds left in a 14 point game. South Dakota can virtually run it all the way down now. So Wichita State will be still in search of their first victory and they'll have to hit the road to do it. Go to Tennessee on the 20th and then to New Mexico for their get together with the Lobos, Illinois and UC Irvine. And that's gonna be a hook and Wichita State it looks like will get the final possession of the game. Plenty for South Dakota to work on as well out of this. They had 20 turnovers. I'm sure Coach Plitzewhite will not be particularly pleased with that, but they did enough in what you could characterize as an ugly game to yep. come out of here with a win. So they'll get to two and one. And the final shot of the game, fittingly for Wichita State, couldn't find the mark. 62-48, your final. Be back with more when we come back. State University is preparing today's students to become tomorrow's leaders. The Shock the World campaign is raising $25 million in private funds for a new home for the W. Frank Barton School on the Innovation Campus. Invest today in tomorrow's business leaders by calling 316-978-4076 or visit www.wichita.edu slash shock the world. Well, the difference here this afternoon in Wichita State's home opener was a decisive second quarter that went the way of the Coyotes, South Dakota. It was 13-11 Wichita State after one. But that second quarter was a real killer for the Shockers. Just never established any kind of an offensive rhythm, outscored 19-4, to and I think you could count on one hand the number of quality shot attempts they had in that second quarter. So many turnovers, so many opportunities for South Dakota to get out and transition, and they kind of put the foot down there and held on the rest of the way. So the Shockers hit the road for their next four. We'll talk to you again here in a couple of weeks here on the American on WSU TV. For Denny Gehrig, I'm Shane Dennis saying thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, everybody. South Dakota victorious today, 62 to 48.